Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day. I hope you're all doing well. If you're in the polar vortex like we are, I hope you're staying warm and um, keeping keeping cozy. Welcome to my Monday mini paper crafting class. My name is Leslie Benson. If you have, if you're new here, um, I go by the moniker the Plaid Poodle, and I just um, teach people how to make pretty things using paper, stamps, and ink. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you're here, please say hello. Um, I'd love to chat with you. I'm hoping I'm where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> it always makes me nervous. Oh, there's Stephanie, so I must be on YouTube good. <laughs> I always get so nervous that I'm going to be like on my personal page or something and people are gonna wonder what the heck um i hope your team won this weekend ours did so yay go chiefs i did see on the news today that the game tonight between buffalo and um i forget who they're playing but we want the other team to win so we can play the next game here at home if buffalo wins we have to play in buffalo so Anyway, that's what I'm rooting for, the other team. But I can't remember who it was. If you know who the team is that's playing Buffalo tonight, let me know. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around. Hey, Kim. Good morning. Today's kind of a holiday. My husband's off today. Bruce is off. So we are going to run. We haven't taken back some Christmas returns. <laughs> and I'm getting worried that um, people won't... Um, they won't take our returns back. So uh, we're going to attempt to do that after I'm done here today. We're going to brave the brave the cold and get out a little bit. We did go to church yesterday, so that was kind of nice to get out of the house a little bit. Stephanie lost last night. I'm so sorry. Not really. Because <laughs> you lost to us. So um that was kind of an exciting game. I felt so sorry for the players, and I just wondered um, when they would hit the ground, did it feel like just landing on concrete? You know, it had to be so frozen. I know they keep the turf heated underneath, but um, gosh, it had to been been hard. Um, and our coach's mustache with the... the um, the icicles? It was kind of gross. They kept showing it. I was like, quit showing that. The Lions game last night was great. Played how a playoff game should be played. I didn't watch it, but I know one of my friends, um, Jay Lynn, is rooting for the Lions. So, um, so that was good that they won. Steelers, you're right. Pittsburgh and Buffalo play tonight. They, they pushed it a day, so... Hopefully it'll be a little bit safer. I kind of felt sorry for our players and the Dolphins. It just didn't seem safe, but what do you do? And there were a lot of fans out in that weather. <laughs> Stephanie agrees that was gross. They kept showing that mustache, and it was gross. I'm thinking it was just condensation and not snot, but <laughs> it was gross. <laughs> um, anyway, we were glad that they won. I babysat all day, and we... we um, we had the girls here and then we took them over to their house and we watched the game over there and it was, you know, trying to watch a game with a little 15 month old toddler running around. It was, it was interesting, but, but I, I got to get to, I got the highlights anyway. Okay. Today we're continuing my series on ink blending. Um, we're going to make a card last week. We did some heat resist. Uh, no, embossed resist. We made we did this little background using some ink blending, and I put the link in the description if you wanted to go back and rewatch that one. Um, how I did the embossed resist technique, and we did some ink blending with that. So um, you can click on that. Um, 
we will never know, not that we want to know. <laughs> if it was snot or condensation, really, I don't want to know, no. Okay, and before we get started, while we're waiting on everyone else to get here, I did again want to mention a celebration is going on right now with Stampin' Up! So if you place an order in January and February um, that totals $50 or more, you can choose a free item out of the celebration brochure. So I've gotten a lot of paper. I think the paper is really cute. There's a couple of stamp sets you can get. Um, this paper here on page 11 of the brochure coordinates with um, one of the stamp sets in the mini catalog. Here is a stamp and die you can get. There's no limit. You can get um, for every $50 increment, you can choose a um, a product. And then I did want to mention the join offer um, that's going on right now. It's been very popular. If you uh, if your wish list is over $99, it's really a no-brainer. Just join. You get $125 worth of product of your choice, free shipping, and you get the um, glass mat situation that we're gonna that I'm gonna use today for free. You get the silicone mat, the glass mat, and the I finally got this wet for my class last Thursday and we we tried it out. The little I kind of like this and it dries really fast, so you don't have to worry about it getting moldy or anything. Um, anyway, if you need a catalog or have any questions about the join incentive, please uh, message me or, or comment and I'll I'll get with you and we can chat. Um, hi, Kat. Kat is in Port Isabel, Texas. Today is cold and blustery. Temps are 39 and dropping. Wow. And you probably went there to be warm. <laughs> You're warmer than we are, Kat. So, okay, this is the card we're going to make. I'm going to, we're going to do some more ink blending. Like I said, in January, I'm sharing different ways to do ink blending. And this one is using some masking. It's a very simple little card. This is, this would be a great card if you are a beginning, beginner stamper. This would be really easy for you to do. And yet it looks kind of fancy, doesn't it? <laughs> so, that is the one we're going to do. And I'm going to put my card like this to hide all the glare from the lights. So what you want to start with is your card base. It's called an A2 card base. And my table is shaking. Again, I apologize. I did order um, a different situation to kind of help with the shaking, and it hasn't arrived yet. So I apologize. Hopefully soon we won't have the earthquake on the table. Um, so I've taken a half of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. I cut it at five and a half to create an A2 card base. And then I'm going to um, score it in half at four and a fourth because half of eight and a half is four and a fourth. And I'm using our Stampin' Up! trimmer. It has a scoring blade on it. If you do not have our trimmer, um, you can also use your own trimmer and just use uh, a bone folder or a stylus and just follow the measure your paper up to the four and a fourth and just follow the um, the gutter of your trimmer. But ours is so nice because it does have that um, scoring blade all built in. And I will list all the products I've used in today's um, class when I get done here. All right, so I'm just I just folded that in half, and that's our card base. So it measures four and a fourth by five and a half, and we're going to do it in the um, this would be landscape, and this would be portrait portrait mode. Hey Sharon, good morning. Um, and then for our blending, I took a piece of basic white. This is going to be our first layer on the card. Basic white cardstock, and this one measures three and a half by five and three quarters. So it's a little, um, I've got a little, little zhuzh there I don't like. Okay. 
see how I didn't fill the whole area? I just, um, this adds a little interest to make it a little shorter. We Usually my first layer would measure four by five and a fourth and it would fill that whole front uh, with a little bit of a frame. But I cut this one a little bit shorter just, just to be different. <laughs> I'll put the card out here so you can kind of see what we're doing. And I can use my glass mat and my blending brushes. And I am using two different inks. I'm using Granny Apple Green and Boho Blue. And my card base is Mossy Meadow. So first I want to mask off, I just want to do that strip of blending. So I want to mask that off. And you can use washi tape, you can use post-it notes. I am going to use our if I have it here, I may not use our masking. Yes, I have it here. Our masking paper. Um, but you could also use um, some non-tacky or slightly tacky tape and tape that little area off. But since I have the masking paper, I'm going to use that. Or you could use uh, post-it notes and just um, block off the area you don't want the ink on. That makes sense. I'm just going to cut this piece of masking paper in half because I don't want to waste it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to be careful. I don't even know how wide this is. It's two and a half. So if I do one and one and a fourth. I can't believe how much math it is, math is involved in um, <laughs> in uh, crafting, right? I'm trying to cover up all the light glare. I haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so I just uh, I guess I could use a ruler. What? How much did I? So that's about an inch on each side. We don't have to be, hey Luby, good morning. Um, we don't have to be too precise. So this masking paper that we have has a little um, paper backing. And it's slightly sticky. It's not gonna stick stick. And um, I'm going to use this grid paper because I can. So this would be about uh, one inch. I can line that masking paper up right with that line. If you have some grid paper, Stampin' Up! also sells a pad of grid paper. And I'm sure if you've watched me very much, you've seen me use it or come to my classes. Um, You've um, you've seen the grid paper. I think it's 17 by something. But you get a pad of I don't know how many sheets, but I really like it. And then I need another inch on this side. So let's just do the seven incher here. Like I said, you don't have to be. I just want my lines to be straight. And this one looks a little crooked. No, I, don't, I think it'll be okay. And then that masking paper also holds my uh, cardstock down. Okay, so now we're going to pull in the blending brushes, and I'm just going to grab two. I'm going to start at the top with the... Um, blue. <laughs> Kim says ma mathing takes some of the fun out of crafting. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. And like I said la in last week's class, I just start off the paper just so I don't get a big heavy spun or um, spongy mark. 
and I'm using our blending brushes. Um, I think you could use a sponge too to do this. It might take a little bit longer. I'm just going to build up the color on this. I kind of made it look like the sky came down into the grass. <laughs> the table's going to shake a lot. <laughs> Oh, see there, I got a big spongy mark right there. <laughs> I'll try and brush that out a little bit, but I think once we stamp our little um, design on there, it's not going to matter. Okay, now I'm going to grab the um, Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to kind of blend up into that blue and it'll kind of turn a little blue green and make an easy little transition into what I'm kind of representing as grass, you know, sky, land. <laughs> And I'm going to try and get darker as I go towards the base of the paper. So it's not hard, right? Anybody can do this. <laughs> hey, Debbie. Are we having a heat wave yet? I don't know. I didn't even check the temperature this morning. All I know is it is hard to manage dogs with <laughs> when it's this cold. We have had one accident, which I am just, thank the Lord that it's only been one, but I am keeping an eye on those dogs, making them go out there in that cold. I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a little bit more blue right here. Just kind of. Make that more of a transition. <laughs> Debbie's has dogs and they've had two accidents so far. I am on guard with those dogs. <laughs> This morning, I have a really old dog. Her name's Soxy. We inherited her from my daughter and son-in-law years ago. But she is 16 and a, almost 16 and a half. She, she just is the Energizer buddy. She never quits. And she was acting so weird this morning. Normally, she'll go out and then come just lay down next to me while I drink my coffee. And this morning, she was just all over the place. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I made her go back out. Okay. I'm going to gently remove the masking paper. I should have taken some of the sticky off of it. And you can do that by kind of, I'll show you here in a minute. Here we go. I might have to work with that. You can take off some of the, if you find it too sticky, just kind of um, stick it against your clothing and that'll take off some of the sticky. I have a, I'm going to have to peel off some right here. Doesn't seem to be having a problem on this side. Oh no! <laughs> Debbie said her dogs have been outside and they came right back in and peed. Oh, that would have made me mad. They said, uh, no, Mom, no, 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 too cold out there. <laughs> there we go. Stephanie said they got down to 17 and needed to walk next door to feed the neighbor's peacocks. Brr, 17, wow. 
I ripped up a little bit of my paper here, so I am going to add a little glue. And I think once I stamp my image, it will be okay. And then I can just wipe the ink off the, um, the glass mat. All right, since I'm working with white, I wanted to be extra careful. Okay, so that's all. That's the masking. Um, I had I was thinking about the masking this morning, and I thought, wouldn't it be cute to die cut some circles um, out of the masking paper and just do just random circles on a card base? That would be pretty. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. I just made it real easy and just did the little um, rectangle. Now, the stamp set I'm using today is an old one, but a favorite. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's the Dainty Delight, and I'm not going to do any color or die cutting or anything. I think I've already got it pulled out here. I think I'm using my Stampin' Stamparatus. This is a retired product from Stampin' Up! but it is a stamp placement tool. So if you have one, I have an old Misty that I think I'm gonna pull out because you can still buy the Misties and that way, if anybody would be interested in um, and I'm not sure that I, what am I doing? I think I did it this way, no? <laughs> Let's decide where we want this. I want my um, card to be right here. I think I'm going to. So anyway, what I was saying, I think I'll pull out my old Misty because then you'll know what a stamp placement tool is and you'll be able to purchase one um, if you're interested in one. This, These you cannot get. You can no longer get from Stampin' Up. Okay, I want my little flowers to kind of just be here. I'm going to use my magnet. These magnets are broken as well. <laughs> I have some um, new ones that I just haven't pulled out. Crafting with Kim loves her Stamparatus. I do too. I think it was a great invention. It just didn't work out. <laughs> but I like my Misty too. I think I put it away because I had this and um, I need to get it back out. Okay. I do have this thing, if I can find it, that I purchased. I think this is why I use the Stamparatus. See how it did, it, I need to re-ink my ink? When you're using a stamp placement tool, um, you can re-ink your stamp and just keep going until it's as dark as you want it to be. And this is also an old Memento stamp pad that I took my good ones up to class Thursday when on my live classes and I haven't put them back yet. So this one needs re-inked. There we go. I think that's good. Kim thought the um, Misty is too restrictive. Well, you can certainly do more with the Stamparatus. I would agree with you. All right, and then I also have my sentiment for the inside of my card. I did the inside this time. 
and my little flower. And for that, I'm using a four by five and a fourth. That'll fit right in the inside of our card. And Debbie's customers don't like the Misty either. I, like I said, I haven't used it for years. I just feel bad using this <laughs> and then not offering you a solution if you do not have a Stamparatus. I'm not sure what happened here. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, I think that should do it. That should do it. Let's see. I think that's perfect. Yeah. So that one worked out. There we go. But see how we can remove the plates on ours? And I've got the sentiment on one side, the image on the other side, and then I've got the other plate. It, it, it came with two plates. It's just a lot more um, versatile. I will say that. It's too, it's just too bad that um, we had to get rid of it. Oh, good. So that worked out good too. All right. I don't know why the other one wasn't where it was supposed to be. I definitely like to use my stamp placement tool um, when I'm using our red uh, cling stamps to get it um, straight, to get my sentiment straight. I'll put a post-it note down and test it to make sure it's straight and then it's good to go. So I definitely use, always use my uh, Stamparatus when I'm doing a, a red cling sentiment. Okay. All right, and then the last thing we need stamped, so we've got those two pieces, is our little, um, what do you call this, sentiment. I made mine a sympathy card. The Dainty Delight set has a great thank you sentiment, a celebrate you, so a birthday. Um, but I've been needing some, unfortunately, um, sympathy cards lately. Is it? With deepest sympathy, yeah. And I'm using a piece of, um, what color is this? Is it misty? No. Y'all, boop, boop, I'll figure it out. It's very light. Soft sea foam for the sentiment. Sorry about the earthquake again. <laughs> I've got to fix that. And I don't care about where it's placed because I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to die cut that out. Um, if you don't have a die cutting machine, like I said at the beginning, this is a great beginner card. You wouldn't need to use a die cutting machine. Just cut a, a rectangle, stamp your sentiment on a rectangle of um, paper and pop it up with some dimensionals and um, you're good to go. So I did not put the backing on this sentiment and I'm I'm a little concerned because this stamp pad really needs re-inked, but we'll, we'll go with it. I think I did this upside down. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Kim snagged a whole new Stamparatus before they retired to have a spare. Um, and she also had to have three different Misties to do the work. Oh, that's good to know. That's a good good testimony of our Stamparatus. Um, maybe Misty should create one like we have. <laughs> no, it's Pink Petunia, right, that does the Misty? Okay, I'm using the Something Fancy dies. These are in the annual catalog. These are great sentiment um, dies to cut this out. But like I said, if you do not have a die cutting machine, just Cut a little rectangle, and I can use a piece of, here we go, 
This is the low tack blue tape that I get from um, Amazon to use, or you could use washi tape or a post-it note to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna use my mini here. Cut this out. I'm gonna do it over here so we don't have such an earthquake. <laughs> I have two um, Stamparatuses too, Kim, and I do use both of them, especially uh, with my classes and things. Okay, what is happening? Here we go. All right. Okay, so now we have our little our elements for our card, and we can put it together. If you wanted to, it would be kind of fun to take some Stampin' Blends and color in these little um, floral images just for just for um, a little color. I just kept this very simple. Put a little. And then we're going to put this on here. Oh, and you know, I've got a tip, if I haven't already glued this down, I learned a tip this weekend, watching another demonstrator, to get your um, layers on straight, put your card like this, and then line it up, and I thought that was pretty ingenious, a good idea, a great tip, before you lay it down. Um, and normally I would use the liquid glue too, which gives me a little wiggle room to get it on there straight, but I think it's good enough. And then the sentiment, we're just going to pop up with some dimensionals. You wouldn't have to. And I bet you all have something, um, I'm using the Dainty Delight uh, bundle, but I bet you all have something um, similar that you could use to get the same uh, look. And then I finally I added the little brushed gold um, brushed gold butterflies, Pol brushed brass butterflies. Falling apart here. If you're on my um, mailing list, my you just um, you can go over to the plaidpoodle.com or I can put a link. I think there is a link in the description. It says the free Tuesday tutorials. If you're on that list, I send out a um, I will send out the PDF. Um, card recipe for this card um, tomorrow. So you'll be getting that. And last week you should have gotten the card recipe for this one. So this one was the, um, we used ink blending with the, um, what is it called? Resist. <laughs> um, Y'all remind me what it's called. <laughs> The um, it's not heat resist, but it's um, emboss resist. There we go. We used ink blending with that. We made this um, beehive background, and on this one, we used the ink blending with um, masking. So I'm gonna try and make that circle card because I woke up and I was thinking about the class today, and I thought I want to make a card masked with little um, circles 
I don't know why it's in my head. So I'm going to try and do that and I'll share it on my socials and you'll see it there. So, um, thank you, Stephanie. Cute butterflies. I wonder how those are in the annual catalog, Kim, the little brushed, um, brass butterflies. You get quite a few, 80, 80 little butterflies. <laughs> I've, I've had these forever. I've used them in classes and I'm still have some. So thank you, Debbie. Let's see. Did I miss anybody? Thank you, Kat. Stay warm down there in Texas. <laughs> All right. I think I got everybody. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back um, next Monday. <laughs> I keep forgetting. It just, it seems weird. The days just run into each other, don't they? Um, and we will talk soon. See you later. Bye-bye.